Matthew 25, verse 35 to 40. Very quickly, we'll round up. For I was an hungered. What did you do to me? You gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. We're talking about living in love. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, this verse 40 is very important. Verily I say unto you. This is like swearing. Verily. Anytime you hear the word verily, verily. It's like swearing. Say truthfully. Honestly. Verily I say unto you. Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren. My brethren. Everybody say brethren. Ye have done it all to me. Last week, we talked about, the other week before last week, we talked about how to demonstrate your love for God. And we saw that you cannot love man if you don't love God. You can't say you love a man, you love a woman, if you don't love God. Because love begins with God. When you love God, then you can love man. If you don't love God, the agape love, the kind of love God has for you to display towards man will be difficult. But if you love God, you will love man. And what did he say in John 14 verse 15? He said, if you love me, what do you do? Keep my commandments. And he says, a new commandment I give unto you that you should love one another. Even as I have loved you, by this shall all men know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. In John 13, verse 34 and 35. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. It talks about if you don't love the brother who you see. If a man says, I love God, I hated his brother. He said, That man is a what? He's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he had not seen? That's why Jesus in this scripture we read in Matthew 25 says, If you, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you took care of me. When I was in need, you came to me. When I was sick, you, you say, no. When did I see you? When did I see you? When did I see you? I never saw you any time suffering of this. He said, no, you did. As you have done it to the least of this, my brethren. Everybody say, brethren, we are, talking, we are not talking of sinners. Hey. There is difference between sinners and brethren. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is difference between what? Sinners and brethren. Brethren are born again Christians. Sinners are like firewood of hell. They don't know God. They are not born again. Our attitude towards brethren is different from our attitude towards sinners. Did you hear what I said? So here, he's talking about your love for the brethren. He said, love one another. Jesus was talking about brethren, not sinners. The way you expect me to love this brother is not the way you expect me to love that sinner. If you don't differentiate these two, you will live a confused Christian life. Are you hearing me? Every born again child of God is not under a curse. But his suffering causes because of ignorance. But the moment he knows he's not supposed to be under a curse, he's taking away the curse. Then he appropriates his deliverance. Everybody say appropriate deliverance. You come out formally and say, any cause that follow me from my parents, my father, my mother, 
who was a herbalist, whatsoever can follow me. I have prayed my deliverance. I break away from it. Through what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, curse has been broken. He has redeemed me from the curse of the law. I am no longer under any curse. But that is different from a sinner who has not given his life, his or her life to Jesus. And that person is under terrible causes. The causes are on his head. You preach to him, he will not repent. Jesus said, repent or perish. It is for sinners. If they don't repent, they will do what? They will perish. But for a born again child of God, please listen to me. The way you relate to believers is different from the way you relate with us unbelievers. Believers are your brethren. Everybody say, my brethren. It's not everybody that's your brethren. It's all, all sinners are not your brethren. Say, our brothers in the other faith. That one is just to, to paint it. <laughs> are you hearing me? Just to paint it to look good. Your brethren are fellow born again Christian. Did you hear me? Who are your brethren? Fellow born again Christian. They are your brethren. So the way you, you are expected and demanded to love them is different from unbelievers. So he said, whatsoever you have done to this list of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So that is why you cannot love man if you don't love God. And to love God means to keep his commandment. When you are able to keep God's commandment, then means you love God. And if you love God, you can love man. Because your, de your desire to love man is, is in his commandment. Is capsuled in his commandment. That's where the love for man is. Love your neighbor as yourself. Is in his commandment. So the moment I show love to my neighbor, especially born again child of God, I show you love. I am showing love to Jesus. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? If I show love to this brother, who am I showing love to? Jesus. If I show hatred to him, if you read that scripture more, who am I showing hatred to? Jesus. If you hate a brother, you hate God. Ooh. Difficult to explain. If a man say, I love God, I hated his brother. Everybody say, his brother. What the Bible says, the person is. He's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen. Koro, koro, I. How can he love God, whom he had not seen? It's not true. So it's a major assignment. As we round up the teaching on living in love, please go with this understanding. That your love for God is estimated or is assessed, is evaluated by, by your love for man. Especially for lo your love for the brethren. That's what you will, even as you finish this teaching on living in love, that is what you will use in knowing whether you love God or, man, or not. How do I love man? How do I love the brethren in the church? How do I love them? If you found that you, you love the brethren indeed, it means you love God. If you found that you hate the brethren, you don't love God. Say you are a liar. May God help us not to be liars. That's why you see knees and church, somebody is suffering. You see one person wear the same cloth every day. Say, oh, this is wearing the same cloth every day. Let me treat him like Jesus. If he's Jesus, wear the same cloth every day. Will I keep seeing the person like this? Then you package some clothes. You come to church. Usher, come. Please. You see that sister there, that one hand. Uh, make you no see also. <laughs> make you carry this thing. Give her. Are you hearing me? You love this brethren. Somebody is suffering of one thing or the other. You say, oh, oh, oh. In what way can I help? you be a blessing to the person. That's the love for God. That's the love for God. That's how I run up this teaching. Please take note. He says, whatsoever you have done to the least of these brethren, you have done it unto me. Wait. They even ask that question very strongly. Master, when did we do this? How? When did we see you this? They repeated all of them. When, 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 when did he do this? He says, as you have done it to the least of these brethren, it is me you have done it to. That is love for church. And if we have that kind of love in church here, wow. Verse 35, John 13, verse 35, become functional. Say, by this shall all men know you are my what? Disciples. Look at it. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love, one, two, 
another everybody we know this church cannot contain people that's why we are taking discipleship training may god make us disciples i say may god make us disciples may god make you disciple make me a disciple of christ in the name of jesus christ when that is happening people will be eager and hungry to join us so wow which can't church be that better church somebody is suffering you have the person Somebody is struggling, you help the person. You be a blessing to everyone. Hallelujah. Did you learn something from there? Is there is to walk, it's not to say too plenty, it's to do it much. It is in the doing. Everybody say doing. Is the doing stage that matters, not the saying stage. To say is very easy to say, but to practice it. That's what we want and we are trusting god to help us to practice this living in love in the name of jesus christ let it begins with us so that you begin to see everybody especially brethren from the eyes of jesus how we jesus have treated this person when that happens powerful so anyone living in love loves his neighbor as himself and self that is, we call it the, the royal law in matthew 7 verse 12 it is love that empowers the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit we just talked about the gifts of the spirit last week color of sound doctrine today we talk about what it takes to know that the, the miracles glorify god but what make you to put the gift of spirit to work is love it's love it's love even for love for sinners the first love you show to all sinners is basically to see how to draw them to christ even when you are giving them food, giving them clothes, giving them anything, if it's not intended to draw them to Christ, you have wasted it. I don't know whether you hear what I'm saying. Did you hear what I just said? If you have seen sinners, people don't know Jesus, you are giving them rice, tomato, uh, this, this. You say, yes, God said we should show good, good. If you are doing the good, with, and it's not a bait, to draw them to Christ. What have you done? Huh? You have wasted what you gave out. This is difficult to hear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every relationship we see now, the first thing will be to how to draw them to Jesus. How to draw them to Jesus. Peter Soros came from America. He, they run prison ministry. He brought food, all manner of clothes, everything for, for prison. In George, just prison, uh, 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 Bauche prison, Bini prison, uh, uh, Kefi prison. I was following them. I preached with, for him in all of these prisons. They would give them prisoner food, clothes, toothpaste, toothpaste, everything they needed. They just gave them, gave them. They were rejoicing. Say, correct, correct, Oibo man. Correct man. Oibo You know all these criminals, the way they talk. They were praising him. But after all the praises, he said, hear the word of God. Then they give me a microphone. Say, if I speak my American English, they will not hear. Uh, Reverend Academy, speak the one they will hear. Even if he's speaking, speak. And I preach to them. All of them gave their life to Jesus. How many of you want to be saved? Hey, call a preacher. You brought food for all. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. <laughs> that is how the criminals gave their life to Jesus. That is love. Everybody say love. That's how to show love to sinners. You carry goods to IDP camp. It's not just to go there and come and dance with them. Then when you go away, they dance themselves to hellfire. You wasted what you are giving them. But when you go, you go with the understanding that this is a bait. It's like you want to catch a fish. You put, uh, you want to catch fish. You put some, some worm on the hook. Primary school, earthworm. You throw it. Then the, the fish, they can't food in here. Oh, oh you, you get the fish. That's exactly what it is. A white man came also from, from America. He, got, he went to Ameri a, a Chinese restaurant in Unijos. Mommy followed me there to eat that day. Praise God. In uh, what is that hotel? He's the show hotel. He invited, he said, he, his father left f uh, uh, so many business for him. Just for the two years, he has retired. It's a wealthy multi-millionaire businessman that he wants to teach businessmen how to make money and they all gather all the commissioners all the top top business all the lawyers every one of them they all gather in uh, 
East Station Hotel, Chinese restaurant. They brought Chinese food. When we all got there, we, he, he said, want to tip, want to do business. He didn't mention Jesus one. All the flyer he wrote, nothing like Jesus. We all gathered there, and then they, they sat, both our largies, our commissioner, everybody, with their car, heavy, heavy cap. They all sat down. They serve everybody food, Chinese food. If I, you pick as you like. They all, after we finish eating, they said, I want to teach us how to become top businessmen. Then the man came out. Said, well, I'm the, my father left for how many business I was concerned. I'm 42 years old. I'm now the owner of so much empire. I own all this. I own this. I see money. He talked about how to make money, how to make money, how to make money. He said, but all this making money will not work. I said, one man is in your life. His name is Jesus. All those people that had food. So is he, he, he coming here to talk? <laughs> they have eaten food. Praise God. The man preached, preached, preached. Towards the end, that was the last thing. He didn't even say, give your life to Jesus. After I finished saying, he said, if you, can you just buy your head on your own? If you want to give your life, just give your life. Not making altar call. The altar call he makes is not to bring them out. So people, from there, people bend their head. Even the allergy and everybody, they bow, bow their hands. I don't know what they are saying, but everybody says something. <laughs> has he wasted the food? He has used it to preach. I'm telling somebody here, this, that is how to show love to sinners. But for brethren, you show, there's a different way of showing love. Brethren, you treat them as if they are God. The way you would have treated Jesus. That's why you treat brethren. Say the the, as you did do to the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. When it comes to living in love. By this shall men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. People are looking for a job here. Give them job. People are believing God for one thing or another. Help them if you can. Do all you can to be a blessing to the brethren. Let there be no hatred in the church. Let there be no malice. Let there be none of those things. And you see God helping us, lifting us up, adding, adding, adding to the church, such as should be saved. That was the spirit of the early church. They were in one accord. They were eating together, breaking bread together, doing so many things together. They were walking in love. May God help us to walk in love.